please listen. Please listen today. Uh, the teenagers, you young boys, and some of you young ladies, and even the older ones, uh, this will help you. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord the had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. I like that. He said, I will bless thee. And Abraham indeed was blessed of the Lord. Abraham goes on and he becomes a very wealthy man. And God gives him all the land uh, that, that he walks on. And it's for his children and it's his children's children. The Lord blesses him. He is the father of of the Jewish people, if you would. It's called, he's called often Father Abram. Abraham. Now he's called Abram here, but God later changes his name to Abraham, so I'm going to refer to him as Abraham. But look at verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Yeah. Not only do I like the fact that God blessed Abraham and God does bless His people and God does want to bless us, His people, but He does it the, for the same reason. He blessed Abraham so that Abraham could be a blessing. Did you see that? Why did God bless Abraham? So that Abraham, through Abraham, He could bless others. Right. Have you ever wondered why God blesses some people and He don't others? Hmm. Have you ever wondered that? I'll tell you why. Sometimes the Lord blesses people that He knows He can trust with a blessing. They'll take that blessing and be a blessing to others. That's right. That's it. We like to sing, Lord, You've been so good to me. We, we sing, thank you, Lord. We sing all these things when God blesses us. We talk about how our cup runneth over. But let me tell you, He filled the cup and it runs over so that you can take that excess and be a blessing to others mm -hmm. on His behalf. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. His behalf. You, you get stingy, you get greedy with the blessing. He can turn it off. Amen, bro. He can turn it off just as quick as He turned it on. The, the Lord a lot of times blesses you with different things. Uh, when we say blesses, we're in America and we're, we're in a greedy generation and everybody automatically thinks materialistic and they always think money, they always think finances. But listen, the Lord can bless you. Yeah, He can bless you with, 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 with treasures. But He blesses you with treasures so you can go and be a blessing to others. But He also can bless you with time. Amen. You can't buy time. That's right. Once time goes, all you've got is a little time in this life. Everything comes down to this little time that we have. Your time is very valuable, and the Lord can bless you with time. Yeah. He can give you more years. He can give you free time to spend. That is a treasure, and you ought to take that blessing of time that He gives some of you and use it to be a blessing to others. Amen. Many times God blesses people with time, with treasures, with talent. Sometimes He gives you a talent. That talent isn't just so you can sing in the shower. That talent isn't so you can play that instrument just for your own gratification or your wife or your husband or your family. It's so you can take what God's given you, what God's blessed you with, and be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. That's right. Oh, that's good. That's good when you see it. I, I could ask you today, now, now, now don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with having wealth. Amen. The world's got it messed up, and, and, and I know one whole side of the, uh, 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 of the, the, the political uh, arena today is vilifying people with money. They think if you've got money, they've got to take it from you and give it to somebody else. The socialist crowd. Now, I ain't even going to get into the politics, but that's not Bible. Right. The Bible says if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, that, it's that plain. I don't mind helping somebody who's trying to help themselves, but right. if you're not helping yourself, Glory God wouldn't have time for you. That's right. You say, preacher, that's awful, that's terrible. Read your Bible. That's right. Amen. God blessed Abraham because Abraham was willing to work. 
And Abraham wasn't greedy. Abraham took that. And we're going to show you some things here this morning that may help you. Uh, but, but, but let me ask you this question. What are you doing with the talent, with the treasure, with the time, with the blessing that God's given you? What are you doing with the blessing that God has given you? I could go around the room and I could point out our different Sunday school teachers that sacrificed their time to invest in our teenagers. I could talk about Ryan and how he invests his time and his energy, and you know he spends a lot of energy up here, in these kids. God has given him energy. God has given him a talent. God has given him that personality and patience, and he's using that gift, that blessing, to be a blessing to someone else. That's right. What are you doing with the blessing that God has given you? Mm -hmm. That ain't even the message. That's just to get you thinking this morning. I want to focus on verse 4. I stopped a little short, didn't I? He says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. I want to focus on that little phrase, Lot went with him. Lot went with him. Abraham, a great man, Father Abraham, everybody likes Abraham, everybody knows who Abraham is, thousands of years ago, and we're still talking about Abraham today. What a blessing was Abraham. When Abraham was called to go out, the Bible says, and Lot went with him. Didn't say much about it, did it? Just said, and Lot went with him. Lot was his nephew, his brother's son. It was, it was Abraham's nephew. Abraham's nephew went with him. And here, in this passage, that's where I'm going to focus on is Abraham and the relationship that he had with his nephew. When Abraham was called out and blessed of God, he is a blessing to Lot. He is told to leave his family, but he allowed Lot to come with him anyway. He's told to leave his place, leave his family, and go where God tells him to. And when he strikes, gets ready to take off, he has a blessing on his life that is irres irres you cannot mistake it. it. There's no way that you cannot see God on Abraham. And when he starts packing his bags and packing his camel, he's got all the luggage in the camel and all the kids threw in the back. They're ready to go. He's got them buckled in. He's ready. got them gassed up, both tanks, good to go. <laughs> Lot looks out the window and says, wait a minute, I'm going with you. He's seen something in Abraham. He's seen the blessings of God on Abraham so strong that he himself was willing to leave his home his family, his friends, and go with Abraham. Right. Can people see the blessings on, of God on you so much that they want to follow you? Mm -hmm. Probably not if you don't share them. If you don't use the blessing that God's given you. If you just hoard the blessing all for yourself, people won't see the blessing. Mm -hmm. They won't want to follow you. But Lot went with him. And he allowed him to go. Abraham was good to Lot. Abraham invested his time in Lot. Abraham invested treasure in Lot. Abraham invested his talents in Lot. Abraham taught Lot so much because within just a little ways, we're going to find out that he had taught him about, about herds and cattle and about keeping employees and everything because here his nephew who struck out with him all of a sudden becomes wealthy as Abraham. He has so much stuff, so many people in his employment, so many herdsmen and shepherds and people keeping up with his stuff. There's so much that the land can't even contain both of them. They're starting to fuss. The workers, Abraham's with Lot's workers. Why? Because Abraham was such a blessing to Lot that Lot grew into something great. Amen. And they come a time because of the strife that they needed to separate. Oh, hear me now. Hear me now. When Lot separated 
from Abraham is when Lot got in trouble. Amen. Lot was great as long as Abraham was calling the shots. Lot was doing fine as long as Abraham was sending the directions and he was controlling everything. But as soon as Lot, who had been a recipient of all the blessings of Abraham, who had been guided by Abraham, who followed Abraham for all this time, who was an under shepherd basically of Abraham, when he's given the chance to make a choice, that's when he begins to mess up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to teach you something today if you'll listen. I'll give you something to think about today. Lot was there to witness it all. Think about what he would have saw. Father Abraham. Mm -hmm. God saw something in Abraham that blessed him so much that he gave him the entire land of Israel, <coughs> of Pakistan, part of Turkey and Egypt. You think about all that God gave this one man. It's all his. To be passed on to his children and his children's children and their children and their children and their children until it's still in the family thousands of years down the road. Amen. What a blessing God poured on this man. Lot watched mm -hmm. Abraham walk with God. He watched Abraham work for God. He watched Abraham as he worshipped God. He saw it all. He would have learned and knew exactly what to do. But when the time come, could he do it? Hmm. We all need an Abraham in our life. Amen. Amen. We Amen. all have an Abraham in our life. Amen. Some of you has been a mom and dad. Some of you didn't have a mom and dad bring you to church. But just like me, who didn't have a mom and dad bring me to church, I wasn't brought up in church. I didn't get saved. I was 22. I wasn't brought up in church. didn't know anything about the Bible. didn't know anything about God. didn't care to know anything because I wasn't around it. I didn't have that Abraham in my life until I was 22. But God put Abraham in my life. I thank God for the Abrahams He put in my life. I could see something different in certain individuals and I could see that God had blessed them and they took the blessing that God had given them and invested in me. They invested their time. They invested their energy. They were patient with me and encouraged me and guided and directed me. I am where I am today. Because of the Abrahams in my life. Amen, brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Who are the Abrahams in your life? Amen. Was it a mama or a daddy? A grandpa or grandma? Was it an uncle? Was it a bus driver or some preacher? Was it a friend that invited you to church? But who were your Abrahams? Do you have an Abraham? We all need one and I thank God for them. It may have been a praying mama. It may have been a devoted dad or a friend, a Sunday school teacher, a bus worker. Maybe a stranger that come knocking on your door and just said, we're having a special service, won't you come? And then you came and they befriended you and they encouraged you and they walked with you. And you could see the blessings of God on their life. And you said, I'll go with them. Lot went with him. Because of what he saw. Everyone needs an Abraham. But listen, there will come a time, there will come a time when your Abraham will not be there. Write it down, mark it, underline it, highlight it, do whatever it takes to remember it. But there will come a time when your Abraham won't be there. Where you have what it takes. To go on without Abraham. There will come a time when your mom and your dad will pass on. My mom and dad is gone. There will come a time when your friend that you look up to will pass on. An uncle or a grandma or a grandpa. Your pastor will be moved to another church. The Lord will take him. Thought he's going to give me this year. I almost, almost made it, y'all. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm not scared at all. I'm ready. 
But you know what? Could you make it? See, Abraham did good because Abraham had a personal relationship with God. Lot did great. He was blessed, had much cattle, had many, many herdsmen, and had so much stuff. It was amazing. As long as he was with Abraham. As long as Abraham was calling the shots. As long as Abraham was making the decisions. As long as Abraham was making it all happen. Lot was fine. It's when, it's when Abraham separated and was no longer there that Lot found himself down there in that wicked Sodom. That Lot found himself down in a place he never dreamed he'd be. He, he lost everything without Abraham. I want to ask you this morning, can you make it without your Abraham? Do you have what it takes, young person, to choose right without mom and daddy making you? When's the last time you did something without mom and daddy making you for God? Remember. When's the last time you read your Bible without being told to by a Sunday school teacher or a preacher or somebody? You did it just because you knew it was the right thing to do. Remember. When's the last time you went to church? Some of you, you're only here. You're only here because your Abraham told you to get up Amen. and get in the car. Yes. I want to know when Abraham's gone, do you have what it takes to do right? Mm. Boy, that's, that's thinking a little bit there. Do you have what it takes to walk with the Lord? Do you have what it takes to work for Him? Do you have what it takes to worship Him without Abraham pushing and prodding and begging and pulling? Do you have within you? You know why Lot had so much trouble? Listen, Lot had a good relationship with Abraham. But Abraham had a personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lot had to go through Abraham to get to the Lord because he didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord. I'm telling you, there will come a time when your Abraham won't be able to be there. And if you're depending on that Abraham, there comes a time that kids need mom and dad. But there comes a time, mom and dad, you should train them to function and make the right choices without you. Because you're not always going to be there. You want them, you want to know that when you're gone, that they have what it takes to make the right decision. But let me ask you, do you have what it takes without your Abraham? Without the pastor? Without your wife? Without some neighbor? Without a Sunday school teacher or somebody down at the church knocking the door, calling you on the phone and begging you to keep, to keep you in? Do you have what it takes? Abraham didn't have to go through a preacher. Abraham didn't go through a priest or look through a not hole and not head and confess his sins. No, he had a personal relationship with the Lord. Yeah. He didn't have to go through a man. You can have that same relationship today. You don't have to go through the preacher or a Sunday school teacher or a wife or, or a husband or someone else. You can be the Abraham. You should be the Abraham if you've been saved a while. It's all right to be Lot and need some help. It's all right to be Lot and go with Abraham. But there comes a time when Abraham and you have to separate and you need to be the Abraham to someone else. Here's the thought this morning that I want to help you with. I want to get in the message here. And you say, you're getting into the message at six still? That's all right. We'll, we'll still beat some of them. To the, to the steakhouse or wherever you're going. Number one, can you make the right choice without Abraham? Can you make the right choice? Just write it down. Can you make the right choice? Ask yourself that. Am I making the right choices? Why did I make that choice? Did someone else make that choice for me? Look at Genesis 13, verse 11. I would love to read the whole thing to you, but I just don't have time. But in verse 11, it says, Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. You remember the story. Look back at verse 6. Because of their substance, 
their substance, all the cattle and all the herdsmen was so great, there wasn't enough water, wasn't enough grass in the area for them to dwell together. They were so blessed because of the substance, the stuff they had, that strife rose up. Look at the next verse. And there was strife. Because of their substance, because of the strife, Abram said, we need to separate. That's verse 9. They didn't want any fussing and fighting. And Abraham goes to Lot and says, Lot, pick which way you want to go and I'll go the other. Mm -hmm. Lot would have been fine had Abraham made the choice. Lot would have done whatever Abraham told him to do. But Abraham knew that he was separating and that Lot needed to learn to pray and to seek God's direction for himself. And he gave him the choice. And he watched Lot look around at the vast, beautiful land that God had set before him. And he seen Lot's eyes focus on the well-watered plains of Jordan. Because right beyond Jordan, he could see the twinkle of the lights of the city of Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah. I imagine it broke Abraham's heart. All that time, all those prayers, all that sacrifice, all those years teaching and instructing, and the first choice he makes, he don't seek counsel, he don't pray, he looks with his eyes and because it looks good. No fourth fault. Thinking about that wicked city and how it'd be a temptation and a draw on him and his family. No thought of the future or tomorrow. He looked at it, it's well watered and it's good today. That's where the everybody's living today is for the here and now. No thought of tomorrow or the outcome. As long as it's good now, as long as it satisfies now, I'm good. That's what Lot had said. That's what many say. He was probably hope, heartbroken. That's what's wrong with young people today. Hmm. You get away from mom and dad. And the first choice that comes your way is like you forgot everything they've ever taught you. And you break mom and dad's heart. You break your preacher's heart. You, you, you break your Sunday school teacher's heart. Why? Because you've been invested in. You've been prayed over. There's been time and energy and prayers and money and talents used in, to develop you and help you. And now that you're on your own and the first choice comes, you lean toward Sodom. <laughs> you lean toward the world. You lean toward the sin. You lean toward the filth that we've warned you about rather than fleeing and getting as far away from it as you can. You lean that way. Boy, is that not a picture of what's going on today. That's exactly what's going on today. But boy, I tell you, kids, if you can ask Lot, if you could show Lot what was going to happen within just a few years, just a few years later, Within 15 years, if he could have saw what was coming, he'd have said, oh, I wish I'd have stayed with Abraham. Oh, that I'd have told those men to just suck it up and stay with him. Oh, that I'd have not, I'd have not listened to this old flesh and went with what looked good and what was pleasing in the moment. Oh, that I'd have listened to my preacher. Oh, that I'd have listened to mom and dad. Oh, that I'd have listened to my teacher. Because he gets down there and he loses his family in Sodom. He gets down there and he loses everything down there in Sodom. Young people, I can tell you how not to lose everything to Sodom. Listen, I'm going to tell you how not to lose everything to Sodom. Make up your mind today. Make up your mind today what kind of person you're going to be. Make up your mind today before the temptation comes that you're going to live for God. Make up your mind today. Make the choice today. Can you make the right choice? Here's how you do it. You make the right choice 
before the temptation comes. How can I make the right choice before the temptation comes? That don't even make sense, preacher. Here's how you make the right choice before the temptation comes. You get down on an altar. You get somewhere alone with God. And you say, oh God, with your help, I'll live pure. I'll live for you. And when the temptation comes to climb in the back seat, you already chose not to. You'll find yourself, you'll find yourself going out with a buddy. And the buddy says, I'm going to stop moving so and so's house. We're just going to swing in for a moment. And you're going to pull in and there's going to be a bunch of cars in the yard. He's going to go in and before you know it, he's in there a little long. And you say, well, I've got to go see who he is. And you go in and it's a party. You find yourself right smack dab in the middle of the party. There's bottles everywhere. There's drugs everywhere. They see you come in and they say, hey, there's old stick in the mud. Hey, there's old so-and-so. And they come in and they throw your chicken and they laugh at you and they prod you and they try to encourage you to do things that you know you shouldn't do. Do you know how you're going to keep from doing them? Make up your mind today I'm not going to take those drugs. I'm not going to drink that alcohol. Make up your mind. Make that choice today so when the temptation comes, you've already made the choice. When Abraham ain't there to make it for you, can you make the right choice? Number two, not only can you make the right choice, will you take the right course? He looked at the well-planned, well-watered plain of Jordan. And he saw the here and now for his cattle, for the money, for the finances. He didn't look to see that that city was sinful. He didn't look to see that when he moved down there and pitched his tent towards Sodom, the pull that it was going to have on him, the pull that it was going to have on his family, on his kids, on everybody around him. He didn't see all that. He went into Sodom wealthy. Mm -hmm. And he come out with two daughters dead in those flames, a wife that, that, that wouldn't even fall and look back, turn into a pillar of salt. He had to be led out by angels. They took them and drug them out, but she still looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. The two daughters that he brought out with him, they got him drunk and laid with him. They'd been down there in Sodom so long, they wasn't following Abraham. They wasn't following a lot. They were following Solomon. He lost everything in Solomon. Why? Because he didn't have what it took to take the right course. You know what you ought to do. You've been told, some of you, all your life which way to live and how to live. There's coming a time when Abraham's not going to be there and you are going to have to choose for yourself. Will you make the right choice? Will you? Take the right course. Sometimes you need to get away from those people that's doing those drugs. They're not your friends. If they're trying to get you to do something that they could ruin your life, that's not your friend. If they're trying to get you to turn a bottle up that could ruin your marriage, your home, your health, get away from them. They're not your friend. They're not your friend. With friends like that, who needs enemies? When he was making a choice, he leaned towards Sodom. You can see that in thir chapter 13 and verse 12. And just a little bit of leaning towards Sodom, the next thing you know is he's living in Sodom. Hmm. If you start leaning towards Sodom, it won't be long till you'll be living in Sodom. Some of you right now are leaning towards Sodom. Some of you right now are looking into the world, looking at the things of the world, looking into the sudden sin. You know you ought not be doing it. You know it ought not tempt you. You know you ought to put it out of your head. But you find yourself thinking about it all the time. You're leaning towards Sodom. Lot leaned towards Sodom when he made a choice. And when it came time to take the right course, he wound up living in Sodom. He leaned that way. He was living there. But it ain't over. He got lost down there. 
I don't mean he lost his salvation. I believe in eternal security. Don't get me wrong. But he lost his way. He lost the blessings of God. He lost the fellowship. He lost his family. He lost everything down there. Even his freedom. You read what happens over there. You read, I believe it's chapter 14. Look over at 14 and you'll find some kings come in and they make war with Sodom and Gomorrah. And look at verse 12. And they took Lot. They come in and they carried Sodom and Gomorrah away. Abraham comes back in the scene and has to deliver Lot. Why? Because, because those kings, the enemy come in and carried away Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's where Lot lived. So they took him too. That's a picture of the enemy in bondage in you. He was in bound. He was just enslaved. He went down there to Sodom and he found himself captured. Yeah. Caught. Here's a word you might recognize. Addicted. He got down there and he found himself addicted to some drug that he tried, some the bottle that he tried, some sin. What are you saying? I'm saying if you keep leaning towards Sodom, you'll find yourself living down there, and then you'll lose yourself in Sodom until the point you're addicted and you're captured. You you need to be carried away by the enemy, and the only one that can deliver you will be a savior like Abraham. Amen. Now we know who that savior is for us today. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. He's the one that can save you today. He's the one that can deliver you from it. But, but I, I, I'm out of time and I'm trying to think what I can skip here. There's so much. But I, I, I was talking to some preachers a while back. And I'm going to point something out to you and I'm going to prove a point to you. I'm going to prove a point. How many do we have in here over the age of 30? Wow. Good group. How many do we have in here under the age of 18? All right, between 18 and 30. We're blessed with a few. You go in most churches and you rarely see those hands. There's a group missing in our churches today. I've been praying. We've got some youth here. I talk to preachers and they say, Preacher, we just love to have some youth. We ain't got any youth. If we don't get some youth, our church is going to die. It's going to drive. We're going to have to close the doors. We need some youth in our church. We need some youth in our church. We've got the youth. You've seen all them kids. Amen. And we've got the older. But you know the groups that's missing? Right. It's the 18 to the 30 year old. That's when they first leave their Abraham. Mm -hmm. That's when they step out on their own to make their choice. And you know what they choose? Solomon. That first choice he made took him away from his Abraham, took him down into a sinful, wicked, perverted world, away from the blessings of God, away from the fellowship of God, away from a place where his family could be brought up in church and hear about God and grow and that have their own personal relationship with God. They're missing today. Hmm. Why? Because they couldn't make the right choice. They wouldn't take the right course. They leaned towards Sodom until they lived there. And now they find themselves lost down there. They've lost their self down there to Sodom. Let me give you this last point, and I'll close. Will you hate the right change? You say, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, well, well let, me, let me remind you. He chose to lean towards Sodom, which led him to living in Sodom, Sodom and being lost down there. And the only way to fix his problem was in chapter 19. In chapter 19, it says, Lot sat at the gate of Sodom. He is part of them. You can see that in verse 1. In, in verse 14, And Lot went out and spake to his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked to his son-in-laws. They wouldn't listen to him. They liked him. He lost all his credibility. He lost all the respect of even his daughters. His wife, everybody. 
He lost it all down there. Before it's over with, I believe it's, uh, uh, I think it's in verse 16. And while he lingered, see, he hated it. He didn't want to leave it. Look, and while he lingered, the men, there's the angels, laid hold upon his hands and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hands of his two daughters and the Lord being merciful to him and they brought him. He lingered so long, the angels grabbed him, his wife, and his two daughters, two of his daughters, the unmarried daughters. He had two that was married that died in the hell, in the fire that came down. But anyway, angels grabbed him and had to drag him out of Sodom. Will you hate the change that it's going to take to get it right? Do you know why a lot of, a lot of that age group I talked about won't get back to church? Because they love Sodom. They love to sin so much that they won't give it up to the Lord. They said, Preacher, I'd come down there, but, but you know, me and my boyfriend, we've been living together a long time, and I know how the church feels about that, and I, I'm just not ready to, I'm just not ready to get things right yet. And listen, I'm not telling you to leave him, I'm telling you to get it right, marry him. If you love him that much and you want to get and you want to live together, get married. Make an honest woman out of yourself. But you hate the change that you'll have to make. A lot of, a lot of them love their dope. They love their drug. They love their sin more than they love getting right. Without Abraham in your life, you're not able to make the right choice. You'll not stay on the course. You'll wind up down there and the only way out is to leave. Yeah. And you'll hate making the right change. But that's the only hope some of you have. Some of you is leaning that way. And I hope the Lord's opened your eyes today. I hope the Lord spoke to your heart. Some of you young kids, you know what you ought to do? You ought to look around and find out who the Abraham is in your life. And you ought to thank Him for investing their time, their energy, and their talents in the blessings God's given them in you. Their patience, their wisdom, Maybe even money. But there's, listen, money's not the answer. Some of the best help, the best help you can get is a piece of wisdom that will help you change your life and come out of Sodom. Amen. Something that will keep you from lingering down there too long. He had two daughters that burned up down there. Maybe, maybe you are so, maybe you, Maybe you, maybe, maybe you could identify with Lot a little bit more than you want to admit this morning. I pray the Lord spoke to your heart. Maybe somebody needs to come down here this morning and say, Lord, help me walk with you on my own. Without my Abraham, without mom and dad, without the preacher riding me, without... Lord, help me to read my Bible through. Help me to live right, make the right choice. Help me to take the right course and help me, Lord, be willing to make the right change. Not hate it, but make it. I'm asking everybody here to close your eyes.